diseases in a fish tank are almost inevitably a problem of poor maintenance, a dirty tank. That's not to say a tank that has developed heavy mulm or developed substantial algae growth. Those are not signs of a foul tank, a poorly maintained tank. In fact, those may well be signs of a remarkably healthy tank. So in this discussion, we're going to be looking at the potential and the treatment for diseases in natural systems and ways to treat those problems naturally. In nearly every case, a fish that is sick is living in a tank that is sick. There are certainly exceptions, but they are rare and uncommon. The primary repair then for a sick fish or a community of sick fish is to make the tank healthy. This means reducing the amount of nutrients that are put in the water. In nature, a body of water becomes polluted when the nutrient level is increased to such an extent that the biology in the body of water can no longer manage to assimilate it and is thereby overwhelmed. This is what happens in a fish tank. So for example, excess nutrition creates a certain type of bacteria that pulls so much oxygen out of the water that it depletes the animals in the water of their sufficient oxygen to be able to survive. And so it's never the food itself, never the nutrition itself that causes the direct problem. The material that is burning off the excess food is creating the problem because it is growing in such proportions as to make it increasingly difficult for the other organisms in the tank to survive. Now it's important to understand this because very often we treat the effect, which is that excess organisms, rather than the cause, which is the excess nutrients. By doing that, we're making matters worse. This is the best example of what is wrong about water changes. Water changes more often than not are done as a way of dealing with the effect of polluting the environment by taking out the water that is being put in a position, if you will, of having to deal with excess nutrients and continuing to provide that tank with excess nutrients simply perpetuates the problem. It doesn't solve the problem. It's dealing with an effect, but not dealing with the cause. So this is the primary principle then, to deal with causes. What is causing the problem? The problem itself may be a very complex medical condition. TB, for example. Tuberculosis is without a doubt the most common fish disease, but the majority of those fish that are affected do not show substantial symptoms. Nevertheless, the diagnosis of tuberculosis in fish may well be absolutely spot on. There is, however, no direct treatment for this. The treatment is to rid the tank of the cause, and the cause is most commonly a foul environment that is breeding pathogens that would not otherwise be there. Another example of this is columnaris and gram-negative bacteria infections are probably the most common serious disease that people run into. There are an uncountable amount of possible pathogens that cause columnaris, and there's no real way to differ them from each other other than a lab analysis. Columnaris is the one most likely to cause an outbreak in an otherwise clean tank, while most of the others are kept rare by keeping the water clean. There are a number of different ways these diseases present based on where they have infected. 
So maintaining a clean environment, maintaining an environment that is not on a consistent basis overwhelmed by excess nutrients or by crowding in some other way, uh, excess numbers of fish living in a tank create stress and create an environment in which pathogens are able to take over. So the sickness that's caused by excessive numbers of fish in a tank is never resolved by treating the pathogen because the condition that has brought that pathogen about is the problem. Ick is obviously very common, especially in new tanks, and is typically brought in by new fish or plants that are in an infected environment. The treatment is to raise the temperature. It's a very simple treatment, and it stops the ick. It does not prevent the ick from returning, however, in that the, the ick is caused by the introduction of animals into the tank that have themselves not been quarantined long enough to ensure the pathogen is no longer present. So again, the problem of ick is a problem of poor husbandry, of bringing animals or plants or other organisms into the tank that have not themselves been held in isolation for a long enough period of time to guarantee they are not infected. Lymphocystis is very common, but usually not all that concerning. It can be difficult to tell the difference between a cancerous tumor and a lymphocystis cyst unless close attention is paid to the timeline. In other words, how is it growing? How long has it taken to grow? What is the incidence of it? There is, of course, in the case of lymphocystis, very little that can be done to heal these animals. The condition is caused, again, typically, by an environment that is uniquely susceptible to fouling, to creating an, an environment in which pathogens are able to thrive and survive. A pathogen thrives in an environment in which its enemies, those other creatures that control it, are reduced in numbers or are themselves threatened. So a rich biodiversity in the aquarium will control pathogens. If that biodiversity is reduced or in some other way threatened, it allows pathogens to take over and to dominate the environment. Another very common disease are nematodes. Nematodes are a macrofauna, they're a kind of worm that creates most commonly capillaria, which is more common than camelanus, but camelanus is easier to spot and diagnose, whereas capillaria is rather sneaky. They are an internal infestation, typically in the gut, that's brought about again by a condition in which the environment has been allowed to foul to such an extent that the columnaris are able to dominate. In a healthy environment, they are kept under control by the sheer balance, the harmony that occurs in a well-balanced tank. When that balance is thrown out of whack, the columnaris is, is one little animal that will overtake and dominate the environment to such an extent that it becomes a threat to the well-being of other animals. Hexameda, not the most common disease, but most fish keepers run into it eventually. Though usually it's a mysterious fish death by bloat or dropsy, as the symptoms prior to death are often described. Cryptobiota is probably reasonably widespread in cichlids, but extremely difficult to diagnose. So how common it is is poorly understood. The best symptom of it is simply half of your fish dropping dead out of nowhere while the others are fine. The exact symptoms prior to death vary between different species of cryptobiota. Diseases such as this are, are extraordinarily difficult to, to determine. These are the unknown causes that, that typically affect tanks where there, where there is a sudden or unexplained death simply because the, the cause is 
difficult to discern. The solution, however, is not to find the cause. The solution is to repair the environment that has allowed those cryptobacteria to thrive. So again, much of what passes for treatment in aquariums is really attempts to ignore the actual cause of the problem and rather treat the symptoms of the problem. This is where the local fish store makes its money by selling medications that are aimed at specific pathogens rather than teaching the fish keeper how to maintain a healthy environment. Epistillus, Tetrahymena, Chylodonella, and Velvet all tend to be found in dirty tanks. Epistillus is more common and more complicated than the others and can sometimes exist in a harmless fashion in the tank or on the bodies of certain animals like turtles. Usually an infection of Epistillus suggests the fish has a bacterial infection. The best example of this is fungus. If there is fungus on a fish, that fungus is growing on tissue that has been killed by bacteria. So the treatment is not a fungicide. The treatment is a bactericide. But more importantly, the treatment that prevents the bacterial infection from occurring to begin with is a healthy, balanced environment. There's also hole-in-the-head disease, or head and lateral line erosion. It's a specific syndrome of bacterial infections which affect the lateral line organs, the neuromasts of fish, especially cichlids. Multiple pathogens are capable of causing this, and it's more likely to occur if certain irritating substances are used in the tank, like pluterhaldidine are used in the tank and make the neuromasts more vulnerable. So in other words, treatment for certain conditions, such as algae, can cause an outbreak in certain kinds of bacteria that will have an effect on the fish to cause, well, hole-in-the-head disease. Hole-in-the-head disease occurs always in the presence of excess bacteria, a result of an imbalanced tank that has been brought about by excess nutrition. There are no exceptions. That's why it happens. That's how it happens. They're flukes, anchorworms, fish lice. They're not that common, but plaque spot disease, for example, is a, is a kind of fluke. Anchorworms are serious, but pretty easy to deal with. You simply remove them. There are iridoviruses. Most common is the epidemic which affects dwarf grammies. It appears also able to affect most other fish, but poorly, and they seem to have no real long-term vectors for that particular disease. So you see, the problem with disease in an aquarium is never the disease itself. It is the environment that creates a welcome mat for the disease, and it does so by breaking down the natural balance that exists in a healthy tank. That balance keeps these pathogens in check. When the balance is disrupted, they are able to expand their numbers, increase their influence, and begin attacking other organisms in the system. If you have a sick tank, you have sick fish, you need to repair the tank. You do not ever do this by introducing so-called medications. You do this by discovering the root cause of the imbalance, which almost inevitably is excess nutrient, although it can also be the introduction of fish that themselves are sick and are carrying disease. It can also be an excess number of animals that are putting undue pressure on the environment. So what I want you to be doing is maintaining a keen awareness of the health and the balance of the environment and striving to maintain that. Not by making drastic changes, because that never maintains balance, that disturbs balance, but by tweaking the little things, feeding less food, being sure that the animals you are bringing into the environment are themselves healthy, not loading the tank with excess nutrients or excess numbers of animals. All of these create problems. If you will pay attention to the health of the environment, you will have gone a long, long way 
toward maintaining healthy fish. This is Father Fish, just trying to explain a few things. Be sure to join us on our Discord channel, The Father Fish Show. A link is down below where you can discuss these and many other matters. Take care and bye for now. Thank you.